Is this not? Think of the image of the Earth from space when that hit home in the 60s. It was like a proof of, for so many certain politics, for a certain future vision, for a certain sense of what we are, a kind of image of ourselves. Is this not something like updating that in this incredible dynamic way? I mean, is it, do you see there be a politics or a vision of the future that goes along with this image of us as, as there was with that image of the Earth, first image of the Earth? So we're at the start of a revolution in data visualization. A combination of the speed of computer processing power to analyze huge mounds, exabytes of data, and software such as processing, which is easy to use, that allows people with an artistic vision to interpret and present that data in ways that are attractive to navigate through. And I think that if you look at the real world that we think we know, that we take for granted, in a visually different, innovative, but compelling way, you start to act differently. So, for instance, there was a visualisation I'm obsessed with about heat loss coming from houses on a street in Antwerp. There was a local project where they sent an aircraft using heat detection and they mapped it out. So you could see that your neighbour's house was emitting less heat because it was not quite so red as yours. Mm -hmm. It helps you understand your world in a different way and act on it. So just as... Kind of visual moral, um, I mean, a, a kind of sort of visualising uh, the new morality in a kind of way or something. Visualising your social responsibilities mm -hmm. in a world where our environmental output is increasingly important to how we all live. So just as when the first images of the Earth from space in the 60s came back and made us realise, wow, it's a beautiful but fragile place. Mm -hmm. um, and while long-distance photography from above on the Brazilian rainforest shocks people into realising mm -hmm. the scale of destruction, I think a lot of what's happening now with visualisations make us aware of things we take for granted. There are tens of thousands of flights a day in Europe. It means nothing until you can see in real time mm. the difference between those days when they were suspended mm. and those days they came back and it was explosive. Mm. And that has made me think about Europe in a very different way. So what is that? Is that, I mean, we've, had, we've been with the trope of development, which from, from a biological standpoint is quite patronizing or, or sort of inaccurate to say that all, the, all that you need for a fully developed nation is somehow furled in a nation and now it just needs to develop with its mummy white mother or something. You know what, and it's if evolution is this to me apocalyptic thing where there's sort of slow change and then there's a catastrophe and suddenly there's rapid change and mammals get flippers. But what do you see? What do you think we are seeing with these changes? Is it one of those two, or is there some other word? Or I guess what I'm getting to is, do we need a mi mixed metaphor along that which we painted Hindu gods and things like that to understand all this? Or is there some? You know, I'm looking for that kind of what is a name for what's going on here, or. Uh, you know, or a f you know. It could be, it could be, people becoming sort of communities as a whole becoming more self-aware of seeing a community and its effects. You can see all the people in Europe travelling around, and you can see the effect of it. Whereas you are normally focusing on much smaller communities, um, and being able to see the planet as a as more of an organism, I think we're showing. As you can see it from space, you see its sort of bio-organism, but there's a degree of which the sort of the data, the data organism is is sort of is becoming visible, and we're seeing how we connect to each other and you know how the traffic flows in different ways from that.